Hey, this is Gregory with Southpaw Scutati, and today I want to talk about Byzantine leg defenses. So I got a package in the mail a couple days ago from Russia, and they were some greaves that I got from Oleg from Helgi's True History Shop. And I had completely dismissed them. I thought that they were gone, lost in the ether of the mail, um, because they had shipped at the same time as the uh, conflict in Ukraine happened. So I had just dismissed them, thought they were gone, and lo and behold, six months later, they showed up. So that has caused me to think a lot about Byzantine leg defenses, um, some of the questions that come up regarding iconography and archeology, span and then how as reenactors, um, we should approach that topic with intellectual honesty and a little bit of practicality. So just to begin, I just want to put a caveat out there that I am not an expert. I am learning this and as I go, I want to share the information as I learn. So please don't take my word as gospel. Um, always get scholarly sources and articles. I try to back up what I do with, with articles and things like that. Sometimes I can't. Um, but yeah, don't, don't just take my word. Please go and talk to other people. Um, there are great groups on Facebook to have communication with people like that or um, some books that you can read for sure. Um, so with that out of the way, let's talk about the dilemma with iconography and limb defenses. So iconography tends to not show leg defenses a lot of times. And it brings up a dilemma where there are kind of these questions. It's one of three things, or, or it's a mix of all three, honestly. And so some people believe that because the iconography doesn't show it, maybe the Byzantines just didn't like limb defenses. And that's a possibility. Um, however, it would go in contrast to what the Tactica and other military treatises talk about. I know in the first couple rows in the, the Tactica, it talks about the first few rows of the Scutati or the infantry, um, they should be armed with arm and leg defense. What that is, is up for, up for debate. And that's what we're talking about today. So a lot of times that debate is um, taken to iconography. And people try to settle that there. Oh, did they use chosses? Did they use plate greaves? Did they use splint greaves? Did they use uh, leg wraps like this? Just a wool leg wrap, um, not different than uh, what the Vikings or, or other um, Western European nations would have used at the time. And uh, the honest answer is we just don't know. There's not a lot of clarity. Iconography isn't conclusive on that. Um, and because it doesn't show a lot of arm or leg defenses, um, we just don't know. Uh, for example, I'll put up a picture here. Um, this is an icon and let's look at the legs. What are those? <laughs> is it male? Are they wool stockings? Are those boots? Are they greaves? I don't think that any of us can concretely say. I don't think we all know. And so that's where usually we would bring in archaeology. And unfortunately, archaeology is just severely lacking for the Byzantine period in, in most of the nations that make up where the empire used to be. Um, I think that as far as I know of, there is a one, there's a singular find of leg defenses and that came from catacombs in Bulgaria in the, I think it was 8th and 9th century, or maybe 10th, 9th and 10th century, I think it was. Um, and it's just literally the foot. Um, it's the foot of male, and uh, so we are pretty confident that the Byzantines used male chausses. Um, is that all they used? We don't know. Does the iconography support male chausses? Yeah, there are some uh, artwork showing male chausses. There are other artworks showing potentially greaves, potentially split greaves. Um, there's one uh, Hungarian, we, th we think it's Hungarian. Um, it's like a disc plate, I'll put it up here. 
And uh, those show split greaves, but there's debate on its origin and even its date. Um, they're probably pretty early, like um, 7th, 8th, 9th century, um, 9th century being the, the, the far end of the spectrum. Um, and so that calls into question splint greaves. Did they use splint greaves? Reenactors love to use splinted leg and arm defenses for Byzantine reenactment, but we have to be honest and say, were they actually using that in the period? And I don't, I don't know if they were, and the archaeology doesn't seem to show it, and the iconography certainly doesn't show it, at least to my knowledge. And so a third option are greaves. There's some sort of grieve talked about in um, the treatises, and uh, we don't have any finds within the empire. However, we do have one along the Black Sea coast, and those are Khazar from the, uh, I think it's like 8th and 9th century. Um, I'll put up some pictures here. And these are three-piece greaves. They're from a grave find, and um, the dating seems pretty certain on them. And so it brings up the question, this is right on the border of the empire. These were people that they came in contact with a lot. Did the Byzantines use greaves? We don't know. <laughs> and that's just the honest answer, we don't know. Um, and so what I have are three-piece greaves. And um, I will cut to me opening the package. Um, I'm actually filming this a day later after I opened the package because I had to, to clean up the greaves. So let's cut to that real quick. Let's open these up and take a look at them. Now, in all fairness, <clears throat> I have seen these, but I saw them about six months ago. Um, I got them from Oleg from True History Shop and uh, they didn't fit quite right. So I sent him a couple pictures and, and, and talked to him about it. And he graciously um, allowed me to ship them back to him. And he, he fixed them according to the pictures free of charge. Um, and that's just super awesome. Greaves are really difficult to fit. What The proper way to do it is probably to, to get a cast of your legs made and then ship them out and have an arbor make them. I didn't have the time or the resources to do that. So um, what I've got here is um, probably gonna not be perfect, um, but it'll suit me for um, this event coming up in September. <clears throat> so they are packed super well. And I just don't, I, I honestly don't know what to expect them to, what condition they'll be in as far as rust or dirtiness because they've been probably sitting in a warehouse somewhere for the past four or five months. Yeah. So here they are. They are a little rusty, um, but that's, that's easy to fix. That's super easy to take a scratch brake pad and some oil and scrub it down. Um, and, uh, that looks like that'll be no problem at all. And here's the other one. And so these are loosely based off of the Khazar find um, on the Black Sea. And that grave site was dated, I think, to the eighth or ninth century. So um, it's a little off again, but um, it's the best guess. So these are gonna um, suit me fairly well and I'm gonna clean them up and then I will be back to show them off for you. <clears throat> okay, so these are the greaves. I cleaned them up, I spent a couple hours just sanding and polishing and um, just getting them fixed up. And uh, they are just a, a loose interpretation of those three piece greaves. And this is where we need to be honest as reenactors and say, uh, you know, I don't think I would, I would never wear these to an event or to some sort of public education thing or even a, a, a social media post and, and claim that they are historically accurate. They're not. Um, it is conjecture at best 
to say that the Byzantines used three-piece greaves in the 11th century. They might have, um, but there's no archaeology in the empire, and artwork is up, up to debate. Up to debate. <clears throat> what would have been uh, more historically and archaeologically honest are male chasses. I don't have the budget or the time to get male chasses, <laughs> so I have greaves. And the reason why I have greaves um, is because I am going to a uh, an event here in one month. I'm going to Greece. Uh, I got invited by a friend and, um, and his group, and we're going to go to Greece, and there's going to be some fighting. This is going to be my very first event. I've never fought before, and my weak little shins uh, need some help. So I have greaves for that for that reason. Um, could I fight and argue that maybe the, the, the greaves were were possible? Maybe, maybe. These greaves in particular, probably not. I, if I were to get greaves, I would want to get like a reproduction of those Khazar greaves. Um, but I think that a more honest approach would just be chasses. Um, and with that, um, let's cut to me uh, trying these on and showing them off for you because it's still fun. Um, and, and this is just where reenacting comes into um, the part where it's a hobby, it's a historical interest, and it's also an active, an active sport. It's an active hobby. And when you're playing with others, there are some measures that you have to take for safety, some measures you want to take for historical accuracy. And I want to try to toe that line. Um, and with these greaves, um, it's falling on the side of protection uh, because I don't want my shins to get all banged up while I'm in Greece. So uh, let's try these on and see. Okay, so here it is. Um, they fit pretty well, um, <laughs> especially considering I didn't send in any kind of cast or, uh, uh, you know, all I sent in were measurements. Um, I, I, I think that they fit tight. That strap goes right um, at the top of my calf where it starts to come in, so that's what's going to hold it up. Um, and the ankle seems pretty tight. Um, I think that they're going to suit the purpose that I need them for, which is to protect my shins. Um, it was pretty easy to put them on. I'm not sure if there's a right and a left. I'm still trying to figure that out, and I'm going to play with them more, of course. Um, but uh, I decided to wear my red wool uh, hosen this time because I didn't want to get my, my nice knit hosen dirty. So um, they fit well with this, and I think that... Uh, if I wore my knee-high boots, which is also a, a point of conversation that we can have later, um, there's there's debate on that as well. So if people actually wore knee-high boots or not, if the infantry did at certain points. Um, but yeah, they, they fit pretty well. Um, so here's a, a closer look up of them. I had my lovely wife hold the camera for me. Um, and you can see some of the pitting and, and rust marks from uh, them just sitting in the post office somewhere. But uh, they cleaned up really well, they fit really well, and uh, I I'm really pleased with them. They don't have any hot spots, they don't rub on the top of my foot or on my ankles like greaves tend to do. And um, this is me with uh, my kit and my <laughs> conjectural greaves. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you next time. Thanks.